Income tax 2021-2022 education credits specific instructions part number one. Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in the form 8863 instructions tax year 2021 on the IRS website irs.gov irs.gov. Income tax formula, we're down on the bottom area with the credit section, noting that both deductions and credits are good, but if you had a dollar of credit and a dollar of deduction, the credit would typically be better because you usually get the full dollar amount of the credit, whereas the dollar deduction would be a decrease to the taxable income and then the tax being imposed on it at that point in time. Also note we have two main categories of the credits. We've got the non-refundable credits and the refundable credits. The non-refundable credits not typically taking the tax liability below zero, the refundable credits may, which if they did, would result in a refund, but it's not really a refund at that point. It's kind of like a benefit program at that time. And this is the form 88. 6-3, the Education Credits, American Opportunity Credit, and the Lifetime Learning Credits. Remember that we're generally thinking about these two things kind of together in that we're going to first be looking for that American Opportunity Credit because it's worth more typically. And if we can't get it, then we'll see if we can still qualify for that Lifetime Learnings Credit. This is the first or the top half of page two of the Form 1040 where we see the non-refundable component on line 20 flowing in from Schedule 3. And then this is the bottom portion of page two of the form 1040 and the refundable area line 29 where we have the American Opportunity Credit form 8863 line eight. So line number one, we're going by the line by line instructions and we're gonna be jumping back on over here to the actual form for the form 8863 line one part one. And this is after completing part three for each uh, student into the total of all amounts from all part three in line one. So going back on over then to our instruction, back on over to the instruction, enter the amount from part three, line 30. If you're claiming the American Opportunity Credit for more than one student, add the amounts from each student's part three, line 30, and enter the total on uh, those students on line one. So if I jump back on over, we're gonna say part three is gonna be on page two where we have the information and we'll talk more about part three in a future presentation, of course, but line 20, we've got the student name, the college, in our case, we went to Cool U, and then the address, and we'll go into more of the detail of this information. But the bottom line down here is we've got that 2,500, which is flowing into the page one here on uh, part one, page one, part one. Okay, back on over. We're saying that if you're claiming the American Opportunity Credit for more than one student, add the amounts from each student's part three, line 30. So remember, we could have multiple students for the American Opportunity Credit, whereas the lifetime learning, we got the maximum amount per return and enter the total for those students in line one. Line three, enter your MAGI, that's your, uh, your modified adjusted gross income. Generally, your MAGI is the amount on your form 1040 or 1040 SR line 11. So line three here, and this is gonna be important if we have any kind of like income thresholds that we need to take into consideration since it says enter the amount from form 1040, 1040 SR line 11, and then you've got your exception. That's where the modification takes in place. In our case, if I go up to the 1040, we've got the 50,000 in line 11. That's your adjusted gross income. And then it gets modified if any modification is needed for things like the form 2555 and the 4563, for example. Let's jump on back over. We're then saying, however, if you're filing form 255 or form 4563 or are excluding income from Puerto Rico, you must include on line three the amount of income you excluded for details. You can go to publication 970. Line seven, if you are under age 24 at the end of 2021 and the conditions listed below apply to you, you cannot claim any part of the American Opportunity Credit as a refundable credit on your tax return. Instead, you claim your allowed credit figured in part three only as a non-refundable credit to reduce your tax. So that the refundable is usually going to be beneficial because that will be you'll be able to take that into consideration uh, even if your tax liability be, goes below zero. So we got this issue between it being refundable or non-refundable. You don't qualify for a refund for a refundable American opportunity credit if one A, B, or C, two 
and three below apply. So number one, you were under age 18 at the end of 2021 or uh, B, age 18 at the end of 2021 and your earned income to find later was less than half of your support. So basically you kind of qualify as a dependent is is in general, this is one of the dependent requirements here. And C, uh, over, uh, over age, or this is or C, I should say, over age 18 and under age 24 at the end of 2021 and a full-time student defined later and your earned income defined later was less than one half of your support defined later. So you would think in situation A, B, and C that generally you, you may be qualified as a dependent of somebody else, possibly a parent, and you would think then possibly uh, if there was any uh, uh, credit, it might be applied on the parent return in that instance. So number two, at least one of your parents was alive at the end of 2021. So now you've got your requirements to kind of that you may qualify as a dependent. You've got a living parent and then uh, you're you're not filing a joint return for 2021. In other words, if you're filing a joint return, then typically married filing joint would mean that you're not uh, a dependent at that point in time. Generally, you would be filing uh, your own return uh, line the, continuing on line seven continued if you meet these conditions check the box next to line seven skip line eight and enter amount from line seven on line nine if these conditions don't apply to you complete line eight if you meet these conditions check the box uh, next to line seven skip line eight and enter the amount from line seven on line nine if these conditions don't apply to you complete line eight so if we jump back on over on line number seven, we've got to multiply line one by line six, but then we have the caution if uh, you were under age 24 at the end of the year and meet the conditions described in the instructions, you can't take the refundable American Opportunity Credit and then it says skipped line eight into the amount from line seven on line nine. So generally we have the amount here, 2,500, but then we can put the, uh, if we if we have one of those conditions, we check the box with the condition. So here you can see we got the calculation for for the refundable American Opportunity Credit at the 1000 and then the non-refundable uh, component down here, which you can see flowing in ultimately to the form 1040 on page number two. We've got the 1500 up top and then we've got the we've got the 1000 down below. I got the wrong. I had the check at the wrong amount. And then if I go back on over and we say, okay, I'm going to put the check here. I'm going to check that box off. We got no calculation in line eight. And basically we're in the non-refundable education credits here. So if this pulls over again to the form 1040 and I go to page number two, you can see it's all up top here in the non-refundable uh, area and nothing is basically down here, which means it could be limited based on your, your tax liability if it's up top here. So for example, if I bring the, if I bring the tax liability down to 20,000, or I mean the income down to 20,000, now it's, it's gonna be limited here uh, to the income. And if I go back then to this page, to the actual form, so that's gonna be the limitation completed here with the worksheet. And if I uncheck this, if I go back on over and uncheck that, now we have once again, line eight being completed and it's broken out between the refundable and non-refundable. So if I go back on over to the 1040 page number two, we're still limited up top, but we, now we've got this 1000 that is the refundable component. And that's the benefit of that kind of refundable component on down below. Okay, so back back to it. We're going to say, number one, uh, were you under age 24 at the end of 2021? If no, stop here. You do uh, qualify to claim part of the allowable American Opportunity Credit as refundable credit. Uh, if yes, go to question number two. Question number two, were you age 18 at the end of 2021? If yes, go to question three. If no, go to question four. Question three, were you a full-time student defined later for 2021? If no, stop here. You do not qualify to claim part of your allowable American Opportunity Credit as refundable. If yes, go to question five. Uh, were you age 
18 at the end of 2021? If yes, go to question 5. If no, go to question 6. Line number 7 continued. Number 5. Was your earned income defined later less than one half of your support defined later for 2021? If no, stop here. You do not uh, qualify to claim part of your allowable American Opportunity Credit as refundable. If yes, go to question number six. Number six. Uh, were either your parents alive at the end of 2021? If no, stop here. You do not qualify to claim part of your allowable American Opportunity Credit as refundable credit. If yes, Go to question seven and number seven, are you filing a joint return for 2021? If no, you don't qualify to claim part of the allowable American Opportunity Credit as refundable credit. If yes, you do qualify to claim part of your allowable American Opportunity Credit as refundable. Caution, the educational institution's EIN must be provided on line 24A. So if we take a look at 24A on the tax return here, we're looking page number two, 24A. We've got the EIN number that should be on the documentation received from the institution on the 1090, uh, 1098T that we're going to be provided. We should have then the EIN number uh, in it. Then we have the earned income. Earned income includes his wages, salaries, professional fees, and other payments received for personal services actually performed. Earned income includes the part of any scholarship or fellowship grant that represents payment for teaching, research, or other services performed by the student that are required as a condition for receiving scholarship or fellowship grant. So if you get a grant, but it's really kind of compensation, then it should be compensation. And of course, if that were the case, you would hope then the institution, the educational institution, would give you the proper documentation to reflect that so you could put it in to uh, this return properly. So you want to talk to the institution about those kind of things. Earned income doesn't include that part of the compensation for personal services rendered to a corporation which represent a distribution of earnings or profits rather than a reasonable allowance as compensation for the personal services actually rendered. If you're a sole proprietor or a partner in a trade or business in which both uh, personal services and capital or material income producing factors, earn income also includes reasonable allowance for compensation for personal services, but not more than 30% of your share of the net profits from that trade or business after subtracting the deduction for one half of the self-employment tax. However, if capital isn't an income producing factor and your personal services produce, uh, produced the business income, the 30% cent limit doesn't apply. Support. So what does support mean when we're talking about the support tests here? Support includes food, shelter, clothing, medical and dental care, education, and the like. Generally, the amount of item of support will be the amount of expenses paid by the one furnishing such item. If the item of support is in the form of property or lodging, measure the amount of such item of support by its fair market value. To figure your support, count support provided by you, your parents, and others. However, a scholarship received by you isn't considered support if you were a full-time student defined next for 2021. So what does it mean to be a full-time student? Uh, solely for purposes of determining whether a scholarship is considered support, uh, you were a full-time student for 2021 if during any part of any five calendar months during the year, you were enrolled as a full-time student at an eligible educational institution defined earlier or took a full-time on-farm training course given by such an institution or by a state, county, or local government agency. So usually the actual educational institution will have the definitions of a full-time student because it's not totally standardized. It's kind of standardized by institution, but you might have semesters versus quarters you know and so on so you want to make sure that you talk to the institution as to what it means to be a full-time student